stencils. Let's talk about them. What is poppin' people and welcome back to another Tattoo Tips video. Now as the intro said, yes this Tattoo Tips video is on everything all about stencils. Now, I think it's important to point out before you start watching this video that your stencil is your stencil and how you do your stencils is how you should carry on doing your stencils. If you are comfortable with your stencils being how they are, then by all means, please crack on with that. You do not have to listen to me. You do not have to do your stencils how I like to do my stencils. So I just wanted to get that out there, but please, if you are comfortable by doing your stencils, then please carry on doing your stencils the way that you do them. Anyway, now that is out there, Let's get right to it. So stencils, the importance of stencils. So a stencil brings with it an accurate representation of the image that you are going to do. To me, your stencil is your roadmap from getting from A to B. And in between is everything that you need to get there. Now, if you have things missing in your stencil, then I, I see it like this. Imagine you went on a car journey and you needed, you needed a sat-nav to get there. And that sat-nav only decided to give you, you know, drip feed you little bits of information. You, you could go wrong at any turn, okay, on the way there. It makes your A to B journey a lot more difficult. So to me, having a good stencil is a good roadmap to get you the best results for your tattoo. However, guys, it is really, really important that you do not overwhelm yourself with your stencil. Do not be going too much in your stencil that you find it hard to read. Make sure you are comfortable with the amount of details that you're putting in there. It's all about being comfortable. Don't try and get every little thing in there and then when it comes to tattooing, you are com you're just looking at this thing and you are just completely lost and you're having to refer back to your stencil all the time of what, what what's this bit and what, 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 what's that bit, what have I done that for? Like, don't, don't get to that point. So, let's put it up on screen, shall we? This is what I think is a bad stencil. Now, as you can see, it is very minimal. There is little to no detail in there. There's literally just the eyes, the nose, the lips, the teeth, and a few like, spots of lines where you would put shading. I've also done this stencil on a piece of carbon paper that has been used multiple times for multiple different tattoos. So when we run a line over, it breaks the line up, uh, it doesn't put the line in clean and consistent. And I've also done it with a biro. Now, the reason I do not recommend biros is due to the fact if you was going in with super, if you was going in with a stencil that's super detailed, a biro has a really thick tip. You can get biros that have thinner tips, but generally if you picked a biro up off the floor, it's going to have a one, one point like eight mil or something like that tip. Uh, which is a little bit fat and if you wanted to get in there for small details it's a lot harder to to get in generally with a biro if you put two lines close together all that's going to happen is they're just going to merge into one line also with this stencil i took little to no care i literally just went round the eyes round the face put a few little bits there a few little bits there and i was done i'd done the stencil within about three to five minutes, something like that. I've made mistakes in the stencil as well, which, you know, is not good. Again, remember, stencil is your roadmap. Generally, if you're looking at your stencil, you are going to concentrate on that stencil and everything you put in that stencil, you are probably going to tattoo, even without thinking about it, because you're just so used to following it. There's just absolutely no direction with this stencil at all. No direction whatsoever. Yes, the the bare basics is there, but you have made yourself a harder job. When it comes to a stencil, getting from A to B, the fastest, easiest way is always better. Now, people can work from a stencil like this. I could work from a stencil like this if I had to, but it sure as shit would take me a lot longer. And having a stencil like this, just it leaves for a lot of guesswork. And for me personally, I wouldn't like to use a stencil like what you're seeing. So let's move on to the okay reference. This reference is a little bit more detailed. However, 
as you can see it comes with dish dash lines now I really don't like dish dash lines I used to use them all the time but when it comes to getting in tons of detail if you were using dish dash lines you would not be able to make sense of what you was looking at but not only that these little dish dashes that you do tend to not last for a full session especially longer sessions when you're going upwards of like seven or eight hours so that's why i try i try to stay away from dish dash lines they, they're just so easy to wipe away like you could you could wipe them once or twice and then they are gone especially if you're using green soap as well by the way stick around for a top tip at the end of this video about stencil and you'll see you'll see on this one i did use biro again also and i also used a non-clean sheet of carbon and as you can see with the dish dashes it doesn't pick up all those dish dashes and then when you put it on skin it's so thin it only takes one wipe and it and it's gone so it's really not worth using dish dashes and especially using dish dashes if you're not using a clean sheet of carbon because it, they're just not going to pick up and they're going to be super thin on skin but this stencil does have a little bit more info to work with and it does get you from A to B just a little bit easier. Just be careful if you are going to do your stencils like this though, because they're gone in no time. So this is my stencil. This is what I would do if I was going to tattoo this image. By the way, this image is from a film called The Man Who Laughs, I think. And I'm almost positive it inspired the Joker. So there's a nice little bit of trivia there for you. If I'm wrong though, tell me in comments so yeah this is this is my stencil this is what I would use if I was going to tattoo it I used a nice clean sheet of carbon so every little bit bit of detail is on there and it's consistent throughout there's nothing missing and it's just a nice clean stencil what I also did is I used a hard lead pencil now a hard lead pencil keeps a point so what happens there is the point is really thin so when it comes to getting into small details, you can really get in there and get those details next to each other without any worry of having your lines come together. Like you may have a line that's like super close together and then like I said with Biro, that, that those two lines that just come like this. But with a, a nice point on the pencil and a hard lead pencil, it keeps it points, those lines stay like that close together. And then when you put them on skin, they, they stay as they are. And if also, if you put a stencil on correctly, let me know if you do want a video on that. Um, there's definitely gonna be no merging of lines. So I always recommend a hard lead pencil. Hard lead pencil is a pencil with H and then a number. You could also use a mechanical pencil with a hard lead, which is even better because they practically always have a point. And if you're running out, you just click and there you go. You've got some more lead. As you can see in this stencil, I got as much detail in as I possibly could without over like saturating it with everything. Like I said, for me, like this stencil right now is how I feel comfortable with my stencils. I can look at this stencil. I can read this stencil perfectly. You've got a fine balance between the detail in there and your comfortability with reading it without over overly doing it. Now, as you can see, moving further up the stencil, we've got the hair. Now, you are never ever going to get every single strand of hair in your stencil. So what I like to do is I like to pick out prominent areas in the hair and use that as reference. It's so easy to get lost in the hair, so just Get in the general direction and picking out these prominent areas in the hair. Maybe it's a load of black or some black spots in the hair or certain strands of hair that go a certain direction that stick out. Get Getting those in will help you out massively rather than just doing line, 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 line and getting just the general direction. Like this, at least you can get the look of the hair and the direction of the hair. Now, I know my stencils are quite detailed and you looking at them now could be like, holy shit, but take small steps, do it in small steps, do one tattoo, then add a little bit more detail the next time, then do, do that tattoo, then on your next stencil, add a little bit more detail the time after. So, you know, go build up to it. Don't just go straight in, put in all this detail in. It's really important that you stay comfortable when it comes to your stencils. You don't have to copy everything that I do. 
you can take some information that you found from this and just adapt it to what you're already doing. You know, you don't need to take something at face value of what I'm saying to you. You can definitely take something, run with it, adapt it and make it yours. But for me, having a stencil like this just completely eliminates any guesswork. And guessing on a portrait is not what you want, especially if it's somebody's loved one. You want all the information on skin so you can just, just go. You're not looking at your reference and being like, well, oh, what's that bit there? And that bit goes up this much. And you're not looking for proportions. Your proportions are there. All you need to do is put in the tones. But not only that, having a good stencil brings with it the confidence that you know that everything is there on skin and all you need to do is just follow it to the T. And a top tip guys, when it comes to stencil, a lot of people will use as a, as a rule of thumb, they are taught to use green soap as a wash down solution, but green soap is a cleaning agent. So you are going to lose your stencil a lot faster when you're using it. So to stop this guys, all you need to do is just use water. Water cleans down the tattoo, it gets rid of any Vaseline and it preserves your stencil for those long sittings. So guys, stop using green soap, use water to wash down with. I also must say, use distilled water. All right, let me just put that in there. Just remember, everything is there for you to do a better job. But guys, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and turn on bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a new video. If you want more tattoo tips, I have a playlist that you can head over there. You can watch some more tattoo tips. So please head over to my tattoo tips playlist and my Chris Ravage uploads and check out every other video I've got to offer. And don't forget guys, this is the best tattoo tips channel and the only channel to come and get your tattoo tips from. So hit that subscribe button and as always, I'll see you all in the next one. Adios.